Uh, can, you okay. can you see my slides? Yes, I can. Please go okay. ahead. Okay, great. Uh, so uh, thank you, Ravi, for a nice introduction. And of course, many thanks to the organizers for uh, giving me opportunity to present a part of my work on this, on this meeting. Uh, and I wish a good day to, to all of you. Um, so I will briefly present you actually quite recent work from our group on Roger Boscovich Institute. Uh, it's actually a part of my PhD research conducted under uh, supervision of Nadja Doslic and with our collaborators, Professor Piero de Cleva, Professor Wolfgang Donke, and uh, Maxime, Maxime Gellin. Okay, so the idea of a work was, uh, so to say, to, to formulate a, a theoretical framework for simulation and assignment of time resolved photoelectron spectra, or shortly called TRPES or TRPES. But I will I will pronounce it uh, in a in a Slavic form, so to say. Uh, so terpes, it's it's a little bit shorter. Uh, and of course, uh, later we we want to to apply this framework uh, to simulate some realistic terpes spectra of some realistic uh, uh, photochemical processes. Um, uh, here I will present you uh, only one molecule which we studied in this way. It's a pyrazine molecule, which you can see here. Uh, I believe many of you are quite familiar with uh, photochemistry of uh, pi pi star excited pyrazine, although it's not strictly speaking biological molecule, but it's, it's a prototypical molecule for many other uh, photoinduced processes in biological system. Uh, so it's, it's photochemistry is well studied uh, in, the, in the literature, and uh, it has been monitored experimentally by, by Terpes method by Professor Suzuki and his co-workers, which I will show you later. Um, and here you can see the Terpes spectrum of pi pi star excited pyrazine, and later I will show you our, our simulation of, of and assignation of <coughs> sorry of this of this terpes spectrum. Um, as you can see, usually in the terpes you don't you don't get a fully vibrationally resolved spectrum due to the relatively poor uh, resolution. So you basi basically just see the shape of each electronic electronic band. Uh, but however, it's 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 usually sufficient to to understand the photochemistry of of a, of a molecule which you are studying it. Um, so we actually don't want to formulate a fully quantum mechanical uh, approach for simulating these spectra, but rather a mixed quantum classical approach, which will be much easier to, to apply and to evaluate the expressions which will arise. Uh, but it will still maintain the, the most important features of, of our time resolved spectra. Okay, before that, just briefly about the TERPES method in general. So it is usually performed to study uh, photo-induced processes as a pump probe technique. So you initiate your process by excitation by the first pulse, which is called pump, and then you let your process evolve for some time. And then with some delay time with respect to the pump, you uh, ionize your system uh, with a second laser pulse called probe. And what you measure here is uh, the relative amount of ionized electrons having different kinetic energies. Uh, of course, kinetic energies are directly related to ionization energies of your molecule, which uh, on the other hand, depend of, of uh, uh, initially populated state of your molecule in that, in that time um, during, your, during your reaction. And so in this way, you can obtain the information about the mechanism of your photochemical process. Um, okay, so how to, how to simulate these, these kinds of spectra? Um, you can derive the expression for pump probe signal in quantum mechanical manner from many different approaches. But as I said here, we want to go to the classical limit of this, this expression. So we want to formulate mixed quantum classical uh, approach. And the most convenient quantum approach for taking classical limit is uh, so-called doorway window uh, formalism, which was introduced 
quite some years ago. Uh, but relatively recently, uh, this year, it was uh, for the first time uh, being applied uh, in a classical limit, taking account all, all important um, sources of a signal in the pump probe, pump probe experiment uh, by Galin and Donke and others. Uh, and it was actually uh, applied on the transient absorption pump probe spectroscopy. So here, uh, we uh, just extend this formalism for the TERPES as a pump probe, pump probe technique. It's not strictly speaking the same formalism because in TERPES you don't measure the uh, transmitted probe radiation as you do in transient absorption spectroscopy, but rather photoelectrons. But I will not go in, into, into details. Uh, all in all, the final expression uh, looks like this. Actually, this is only one term corresponding to excited state absorption contribution to the pump probe signal. Uh, here we lack a ground state bleach uh, signal, which can be accounted also, but here for the sake of simplicity, we, we neglected it. Um, okay, so the excited state absorption is uh, calculated as a product of two functions. So it's a doorway and window function. Uh, and we have to average this product uh, along whole nuclear phase space and over all excited states, which can be reached by our pump pulse. Um, okay, so this, this expression is uh, in practice, of course, evaluated by important sampling technique. So the first step to evaluate the terpes site density uh, is to perform doorway sampling. So this is doorway function. It describes the interaction with the pump pulse. Actually, it gives you the probability that pump pulse will excite some certain classical point from nuclear phase space, QP, to some excited state I. So we have ground state Wigner distribution, oscillator strength of that excited state. And here we have um, a pump spectrum, pump intensity evaluated at the excitation energy. So in this approach, we actually account for specific shapes of our pump and as you will see later probe pulses uh, in, the, in the pump probe experiment. Okay, then after you sampled your classical points, you need to propagate them in the excited state uh, manifolds. Uh, you can do it in many different ways. The most obvious way is uh, surface hopping dynamics, in which you propagate your classical points on adiabatic surfaces, but you allow your molecule to change the uh, currently populated state in a time, in each propagation time step. After you have your trajectories done, you have to evaluate the window functions along each of trajectories. Uh, the window function actually describes the probability that the probe will detect your classical trajectory. So it's actually, for, terp for the case of TERPES as a pump probe spectroscopy, it's given by a partial photoionization cross-section, weighted again by the probe uh, intensity on transition energy here. Uh, it's a little bit tricky how to calculate uh, partial uh, photoionization cross sections. Um, they can be extracted from the transition dipole moments between so called Dyson orbitals for certain ionization channel and so called continuum orbitals. Dyson orbitals are uh, pretty much, I believe, familiar quantities in, in photoelectron spectroscopy, but the continuum orbitals are much, much uh, higher, uh, much complicated to, to calculate. Uh, they can be calculated in, again in many, in many ways. Here we applied maybe one of the most accurate ways to, for treating the photonization continuum, uh, B spline static exchange DFT uh, approach. Okay, so basically this is this is the theoretical footing on which we are working. Um, so the final expression is relatively simple, I would say. So it resembles to, to the nuclear ensemble approach, which is often used to simulate one dimensional, ordinary, so to say, absorption spectra. Uh, but it has to be applied uh, on each time step along surface hopping trajectories, while you account for specific pump and probe shapes in the, in the frequency, in the energy domain. And uh, here we come to the main drawback of this approach. Uh, due to the some approximations we applied, we actually lost the information about temporal shapes of our 
pump and probe pulses. Uh, but however, uh, it appears that this information can be reconstructed as shown by uh, Bonacic, Kutetsky and Mitric uh, simply by convoluting your, so to say, pure uh, doorway window uh, signal with pump probe cross correlation function, which looks like this if you assume um, if you assume the Gaussian shape of your pulses. Um, okay, so now we have everything and we just need to evaluate all of these expressions. And for pyrosine case, it looks like this. So this is experimental. Uh, terpes of pyrosine, uh, as I said, recorded by Professor Suzuki. And these are our two simulations. So we have pure doorway window simulation is in which, as you can see, we don't get any signal for negative. Uh, delay time because we don't have uh, temporal shapes of our pump and probe pulses included. And this is temporal convolution doorway window simulation. As you can see now, we have some non-zero intensity for negative delay, delay time times uh, the same as in the, in the experiment. Okay, so all in all, as you can see, the agreement is, I would say, pretty good. So we have all bands properly um, simulated in the terms of energy position. This we probably owe to the accurate treatment of uh, bound neutral and cationic states. Here we employed CASPT2 treatment. Um, we also have accurate description of dynamics of each band. For example, this decaying band, we see that its dynamics is relatively accurately described. So it's again uh, due to the accurate treatment of non-adiabatic dynamics, which surface hopping appears to be in this, in this uh, context. Uh, the intensities, relative intensities are, are also relatively accurately described. Apart from this uh, band here, we don't get uh, this bright signal here, but as you can see, this is extremely low photoelectron kinetic energy value. So these photoelectrons are quite slow and they are continuum orbitals, um, uh, they are not easily calculated, especially not by static exchange DFT approach, which actually breaks for, for such slow uh, photoelectrons. I, I will not go into details here uh, regarding the things which we uh, learned about the pyrosine photochemistry from these simulations. Uh, I would rather refer you to our publication uh, regarding this work. But what I want to share with you uh, next is uh, automatic way how to assign this spectrum. So when you have a spectrum, you want to assign it in the terms of electronic state to understand the photochemical process which you are, uh, which you are uh, investigating. Um, in, in the case of uh, time resolved spectroscopy, it's, it's unconvenient to do it by hand by examining your molecular orbitals and CI coefficients because you have quite a lot of trajectories and quite a lot of time steps. So you have quite a lot of geometries on which you should visualize your orbitals and, and, and examine CI coefficients. So we tried to formulate, a, so to say, automatic assignment procedure, uh, which is based on diabetization. So we'll calculate a component of terpes arising from a single uh, ionization channel in diabetic basis, not adiabatic, because we are usually interested in the assignment in the terms of diabetic states, uh, the states which maintain their, their electronic character as, as the geometry of molecule uh, changes. And uh, we obtain window function for this type of diabetic signal, so to say, simply by weighting the uh, overall window function by uh, the matrix element of adiabatic to diabetic transition matrices for, for neutral and cationic bound, bound states. Uh, in practice, it looks like this. So this is the doorway window simulation of purpose of a pyrazine, which breaks down to the components arising from ionization of three different uh, uh, states of neutral pyrazine. So we have B3U, AU, and B2U state, you, we can also decompose it according to cationic, to the, to the character of, of uh, final cationic state, and we can decompose it according to both. So we, we get sort of sort of matrix of, of spectral components. And now we immediately know that 
I don't know, for example, this, this band here on approximately four electron volts of kinetic energy, that in the early times, it originates from the ionization of B to U, pi pi star state, but in the later times, it originates from ionization of these two n pi star states, B, B3, 3U and, and AU. Uh, okay, so I believe this is more or less uh, all I wanted, I wanted to share with you. So I will just briefly summarize. Um, so here we formulated a simple mixed quantum classical approach to simulate uh, terpes uh, spectra. Uh, and it yielded a quite accurate simulation of balance ionization purpose for the pyrazine case. However, it has to be combined with accurate uh, treatment of bound electronic states. As I said here, we employed multi-reference treatment. A single reference would also here do the job, but however, it should, it should be a uh, highly correlated single reference method like couple cluster with, with uh, triplets and 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 so on, uh, and you also need an accurate treatment of cross sections, which you can obtain by static exchange DFT approach, and also uh, we formulate a simple automatic assignment procedure for these kinds of spectra, which is based on diabatization. All you have to do is perform diabatization along your surface hopping trajectories, and you you get your time results electronic in this case photoelectron spectrum uh, immediately assigned in the terms of, of uh, electronic diabatic states. Uh, this can actually be applied on any other case of uh, electronic time resolved spectroscopy, like transient absorption or any, any other. Uh, okay, for the end, I would like to thank to the funding, uh, so Croatian Science Foundation and uh, Isabella Cluster, and of course, to, to all of you for your kind attention. Thank you very much. So, thank you, Thomas Love. Um, so, we have time for a few questions. Um, um, so far, I do not see any raised hands um, overall. So, Thomas Love, I had a couple of questions actually. With regards to your doorway window formalism, um, okay. so um, uh, so how do you uh, you know uh, so how do you describe your uh, pulse shapes here? The epsilon squares that you have are they delta functions? Are they Gaussians? Okay, uh, uh, here here we employed uh, we we assumed the Gaussian shape of of the pulses uh, as noted in the experimental work of Suzuki. Uh, and in this in this work here, actually the pulses, the pump and probe pulses which were used in this work were generated and uh, previously, and there are two separate publications with uh, the details uh, of of temporal uh, and frequency shapes of these pulses. So we we just took their param parameters like full width half maxima, which which you can which you can see here. Of course, you can do Fourier transform and then get the the right. full width half maxima in frequency domain. Yeah, so I, I was, it was interesting because you actually have zero time delays and negative time delays as well, right? So that indicates like an overlap of the pump and the probe. Exactly, um, but, yeah, but, only, so. but only if you, only if you uh, calculate this time convolution doorway window. So here we have, we don't get any signal here. Mm -hmm. So this is, right. this is obtained by assumption that the pump and probe pulses are non-overlapping. Right. So that, that accounts for the probe arriving even before the pump. Is that right, actually? Yes, but uh, uh, it, it, this, this simulation does, but uh, not in, so to say, in a very accurate way. Uh, uh, not in the sense uh, of, um, uh, uh, so not, not, not from the first principles, but rather like this. So the convolution from yeah from this paper from this paper here this is also derived by quite several approximations uh, but it's not it's not only that the probe comes before pump but uh, rather that delay time is 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 not the time difference between the moment in which you detect by the probe 
your system right. and your you excite it's not that difference it's it's rather the, the time difference between the maximum of pump and probe mm -hmm. right. but, but the probe the probe can excite your molecule slightly, yeah. slightly before t equals zero and the probe uh, for i don't know delay time 25 femtoseconds it can ionize your molecule slightly after mm -hmm. right after its maxima but you in the experiment you will prescribe all of the data to delay time equals 25. So this is this right. is mainly accounted for uh, by this. this by the right. Yeah, exactly, exactly. OK, that makes sense. I had a very quick question about that plot that you just showed. Um, you know, so I noticed that the resolution in the regular doorway window before the time convolution, right? Mm -hmm. So the resolution is poorer. I mean, that's simply because of uh, intrinsic resolution. Uh, um, uh -huh. in, in a calculation or uh you mean the the temporal resolution or uh yeah the temp the temporal resolution i uh, mean in the sense in the sense uh, not only is the black region um missing right before the zero time delay but also the shapes appear to be slightly fuzzy. different actually. little bit fuzzy yeah uh, okay. uh this temporal resolution it it glances a little bit obviously uh hmm. Uh, yes, so so you're right. You're you're right. Uh, this is pretty mo pretty much fuzzier than 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 this. Um, however, the, the the time step is the same. Maybe it's, it's just mm. an optical illusion <laughs> here because this is this is much more glancer. Uh, but as you can see in the experiment, it's it's more or less glance. Right. It's it's flat. So this temporal convolution does the job here. Not only by generating a signal for negative delay time, but also for, for glancing your, your bands, as you will see in the experiment, if you want to see that. I okay, thank you, Thomas. I answered yeah. that question. Yeah. No, you, you did, actually. I, yeah, it's, it's fascinating data. But um, anyway, so I think it's time now to thank uh, Tomislav, and we move to the next talk. Um, thank you. So Tomislav, if you can unshare. Uh,